think sim racing is for you but you don't know where to start we're gonna tell you right now <laughs> like our logo? Yeah, we thought you would. Get it now at our partner Spreadshirt.net. Greetings petrol heads and welcome to a special episode in our channel. During the holidays you may have done what I did and that was watching a lot of YouTube videos and you may have seen a lot of sim racing because it looked interesting. And after a while you started thinking, well, maybe I could do that myself. But what do I need for that? How much is it gonna cost? Don't worry, we're here to save you in your moment of need. You have a need for information, we have the information. If after watching this video you still have questions, you're very invited to write them in the comments of this video and we will see that we will answer them as best as we can. Let's start with the most basic of questions. What do you need to start in your hobby as a sim racer? At the most basic, you need a hardware device, including a monitor, sim software, a controller. There are different devices, mobile phones, consoles and whatnot. But in my not so humble opinion, the most sense is to get a PC, at least one sim, although many of us have more than one, and a wheel. I recommend to start small and grow as you decide to keep racing. Unless you have unlimited funds, that is. So let's go part by part. While there are sims on consoles, a set of Corsa comes to mind, you'll find most sims and the greatest variation on PC systems. Not only are there more sims, many of them can be modded, which means getting added content from the community to have more cars, more tracks, liveries and other helpers. For the sake of simplification, I'll talk only about sim racing on PC systems in this video. So okay, you got yourself a PC, what do you need now? You're gonna need at least one racing simulation. The Sim Racing World knows Simcades and Sims. Simcade, which is a portmanteau of simulation and arcade, have simplified physics and allow you to drive more to the limit than a sim and a real vehicle would. Together with the physics, the reactions of car and track are simplified too, including or more especially, damage. Often enough, you don't even need to set up the vehicle or you need only small changes. Simcades have opened the appetite for racing for many. And if you're not sure and you want to start very easy, go and get a Simcade. Something like Formula One 2018 or get one of the grid games that are quite cheap on Steam. And you can see if this racing thing is something for you. It helps that simcades are easy to play with a controller or the keyboard, so you don't have to buy a wheel to find out if racing is something that you want to do longer. But if you want as much realism as possible, you'll end up with at least one racing sim. Generally, these software packages are considered a sim. Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, which is on early release, Automobilista, iRacing, Race Room Racing Experience, and R Factor 2. They are all a little bit different from each other, so I'm not gonna recommend you one or the other, I'm just gonna show you the differences in them, and based on those you can decide what is more important for you, and therefore decide which one you want to buy. I've made a little table that I will also upload to romrom.net and put the link in the description. On the one hand we have the sims, on the other the different things that they support and how well they support it. Assetto Corsa has very realistic physics, quite good graphics, supports VR, that's virtual reality, has tons of mods and little helpers. And there are also a lot of DLCs. Assetto Corsa is not being developed anymore, there are not gonna be any bug fixes, any DLCs, the package that you buy is what you get, but you're getting a very good package. 
now that it is not being supported anymore you can buy Aceto Corsa, The Sim and all the DLCs for something like 20, 30 euro US dollars. It does not have weather conditions, although there is a mod for that. And it doesn't have a day and night cycle, although there is a mod also for that. That's the nice thing about mods. You can change a lot of things in your sim. Aceto Corsa Competizione is still in early release and will be so at least until Q1 of 2019. Choose it only if you like to be a beta tester. It has exceedingly good physics quite good graphics it supports vr but there are problems with it watch my videos on aceto corsa competizione to know why i'm saying that does not support mods it has different weather conditions which are very well implemented it has a day and night cycle it is supported of course because it's on early release and is concentrated on gt cars it's the official blank pain game after all it has an interesting way of rating players which will influence who you meet in a multiplayer. And while the price at the beginning of the early release was only 25 euro USD, now that the early release phase is almost at an end, it's nearing the normal price for any game. Automobilista. The physics are quite okay. Not as good in my opinion as the ones in Assetto Corsa or R Factor 2. The graphics are dated. It does not support VR, has many mods, has many Asian and American tracks, vehicles and series you won't find anywhere else, but it's something like in support limbo. Officially, the studio programming Automobilista, that's Reza Studios, declared that they had finished programming Automobilista and that they were moving on to the next version of Automobilista, but a couple of weeks ago they said they were going to publish a new DLC, so Nobody's sure what the status is of Automobilista. It does not support different weather conditions. It does not have a day and night cycle. The price is quite okay. You'll find it on sales very often. High racing, very realistic physics, good graphics that are being updated, supports VR, doesn't support mods, is very much set up for online racing. As far as I know, it does not support dynamic weather conditions, but since a couple of months, it has a day and night cycle. It is supported and it's been continually updated. It is very strongly concentrated on US tracks and series, but it does include also other tracks and series. And with regards to the price, I think iRacing is where you're gonna spend the most money. You pay extra for tracks, you pay extra for cars, and you have the monthly subscription fees. Race Room Racing Experience or R3E for friends. It has very realistic physics, quite good graphics. By the way, I haven't talked much about the sound, but the sound on Race Room Racing Experience is excellent supports VR. It has no mods that I'm aware of. It does not have dynamic weather conditions and neither does it have a day and night cycle. It's being supported. There are updates and new content. And the price, well, I don't like the price policy. I think you end up spending too much money, but there are people who are okay with it. You pay for cars, for tracks, for liveries or for complete series. If you want to know more about Race Room Racing Experience, take a look at uh, the video that I did after I started testing it. A nice thing of Race Room Racing Experience is you can download it for free and I think you get one or two tracks and two cars so you can test if it's something that you like, if it appeals to you, but you have to pay for each and one of them. Last but not least, R Factor 2. R Factor 2 has quite realistic physics. It's okay on the graphics. They are being updated. It supports VR quite well. The immersion on VR is excellent. Has many mods and it's very easy to add the mods through the Steam Workshop. It has dynamic weather conditions. It has a day and night cycle. It has been used in the past and is still being used for virtual endurance races. R-Factor 2 is still being supported. 
and the price is quite well, although some of the DLCs have a quite steep price in my not so humble opinion. Okay, you have a PC, you have decided that you want to start with this or that sim. How do you play it? While you can use keyboard and mouse, the best way to race is the way everyone in real life races. With a wheel. Talking about wheels would fill a whole playlist of videos, and this is only supposed to be an overview. Don't invest too much at the beginning. Buy a cheap wheel with force feedback, even a used one. You don't know yet if you're going to race for a long time. Maybe after half a year you'll grow bored, and if you invested thousands and thousands of euro or US dollars, you're gonna regret it. Go for an entry-level wheel, a Hori or the Thrustmaster Ferrari 458 Spider. Avoid the speed links, they are not good. These wheels will set you off by about 100 euro US dollars. They're good enough if you're a beginner and you can train muscle memory and train the tracks. And if after a while you consider that you want to continue racing, you can then take a look at wheels that cost more. Just to give you an overview, on the middle price level, which is about 200 to 300 euro USD, you can go and buy a Logitech G29 or one of the Thrustmasters. Then on the high level, 300 to 600 euro USD, you can go for a Fanatec or one of the high priced Thrustmasters. And if you really, really, really are convinced that sim racing is something you would like to do, then you'll start looking at the so-called direct drive wheels that set you back 1000 to 2000 and more Euro USD. Companies producing these kind of wheels at these kind of prices are Fanatec, Leo Botnar, Rigmotec, Sim Experience. And there is also the open sim wheel, which is do it yourself with 3D printing. Coming back to one of the questions that I said at the beginning of this video, what are the costs of a complete entry level system? Bear in mind the quest for even more realism without having to set foot in a real racing car is what will mostly drive costs up. You will already get a great deal of realism with a cheap wheel and one monitor, but you will get an immense lot more realism with a costly direct drive wheel, a motion racing rig and virtual reality. Or if you get motion sickness from virtual reality, a 360 degrees projector that gives you as much field of vision. Sky is the limit when it comes to costs. For a very basic system, you need one monitor. Monitor is good enough for racing, you can get for around 100 to 150 euro and US dollars. You'll need a controller as we discussed, take a wheel for 100 euro US dollars. You'll need a PC, one that is good enough, will set you back by about 800 euro US dollars. And you'll need a sim which you can already get for about 20 to 30 euro US dollars. For around 1,200 euro US dollars, you can start in sim racing. If you already own a gaming PC, the added costs are only about 200 to 250 euro US dollars. Start with that, start cheap, start small. And if you notice that you want to continue sim racing and that it is something for you, if you've been bitten by the sim racing bug, you can then see where you want to spend more money and where you want to spend it first. Let me say one small thing. If you want to expand your field of vision after having raced with one monitor and are thinking about maybe buying a bigger a round monitor or three monitors, take a look at VR. Test VR and if you don't get motion sickness, go for it rather than going three monitors. I first bought one monitor, then two more monitors, then I went VR, 
and now one of my monitors languishes never used because I don't do three monitor racing anymore. I only almost only race on VR. VR gives you a whole new level of realism. You can move your head so you look exactly where you want to look. It gives you an excellent depth perception and with that the ability to drive nearer to the apexes and nearer to the other cars. In my experience it skimmed about one to two seconds from my driving compared to three monitors. VR systems cost from about 200 USD or Euro to about 600 USD and Euro and are really worth it if sim racing is your thing and therefore you want to expand the field of vision. So, okay, you got your wheel, you got your sim, you got your PC, you got your monitor. What now? Well, connect your controller, start a sim, choose a car, choose a track and derive. Get to know how a car feels in a sim, how a track feels in a sim. Build up your muscle memory and just race, 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 race. A good car to start with is either one of the very small, a Fiat 500, a Mini Cooper, a Renault Clio, or the very tame Mazda MX-5. The career mode of Assetto Corsa sits you in a 500 for a start. You can go to any track, preferably a track that you already know by watching uh, videos, by watching races, but don't start with Bathurst or Nordschleife. They are too difficult and you will only get frustrated. Maybe try Spa, as almost every sim has that one and it's not really a difficult one. Just be careful with Eau Rouge. While all sims allow you to have and use driving assists, I recommend to put them all off or on factory settings because it's going to be more difficult for you to wean yourself off the assists than it is to learn correctly from the get-go. Only set them on if there are things that occupy too much of your attention. Driving is a complicated thing, racing even more. You'll slip, you'll crash, you'll slide, you'll be befuddled. Don't worry, nothing is lost if you do. Most of all, practice, 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 practice. Race, race, race and race again. And most specifically of all, have fun. I hope I could give you a good overview over what I consider an excellent hobby, a hobby that occupies a lot of my time but is a lot of fun. If there are any questions open, ask away in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please be so kind and applaud by leaving a like. If you want to see more videos from us, subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell. And until the next time, save fuel, collect pickup and we'll see each other at the podium. Visit romrom.net to connect to fellow sim racers and sim racing fans.